Welcome to MMA Fancast. My name's Luke, and I am joined by first time guests and one half of the co main event for 247 Fighting Championships Brawl in the Berg 13, Reckless Rico Tally. Yo, yo, how you doing, Luke? I'm doing very well. It's an honor to have you on the show. Um, you are not only um, going to be a big deal, obviously, for 247, October 1st, Monrovo Convention Center. You're part of the co-main event. You're fighting Justin to General Patton. He's the hometown guy. Going to be a lot of excitement uh, supporting him and obviously kind of cheering against you. But what I'm excited to talk right about before we get to the fight is you fight at sort of a, a big deal of a camp. Um, you, you fight at Rufo Sports. So let's talk about that. What's that like years ago? Uh, maybe what three, four years ago, um, C, uh, CM Punk came through that gym, and I'm saying that in a good way. Got a lot of attention on the on the gym. You produced champions. It's a high level gym. You're going to be flying or driving into Pittsburgh. It's a big trip in for you. Um, so let's talk about like your situation training at such a famous gym, and how'd you get there? How's training been going for you at that gym? Yeah, so training at Rufus Sports has been uh, really good, you know what I'm saying? Like, since I got there, like, everybody was just, like, just, like, um, what's that word? Like, welcome me with just open arms, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you get there, obviously, you're kind of thinking, like, oh, it's Sergio Pettis here, Tyron Willie over here, Anthony Pettis here. Like, you got all these, like, celebrity, like, superstars, but, like, they're, like, the most cool, coolest, humblest people you can meet. And then they always want to help you, give you knowledge, give you advice, because they've been there and done that in my situation, you know, you know as far as, like, you know, fighting, coming up, being on the rise, being a young prospect. So I could always look to them for the insight of knowledge. And then as far as, like, how I got there, they was um doing a uh, scholarship for fighters, like, uh, last year, like, looking for the next generation of fighters to, like, get in there and fight. And, like, uh, I signed up, I put my name out there, and I ended up getting selected to be one of, like, the many few. And then I moved, I packed all my stuff up from uh, Hobart, Indiana, and then I've been here since, I've been here since, and it's been almost a year and a half since I've been in Milwaukee. Wow. Well, that, that story of how you got there is even more exciting than I, than I <laughs> thought. So Rufus Sport themselves did sort of a scholarship, o- almost like an early Dana White looking for, uh, looking for a fight type thing, where they were looking to bring fighters in to train out of their gym. That's what you're talking about? Yes, sir. Well, that is exciting. How many fights have you had? I know that you started out your pro career with a loss. You've been on a three-fight win streak since, which is fantastic you're three and one how many of those fights have been under your current gym uh um all my fights all my pro fights have been under group of spray you know what i'm saying I, I, especially like after the first loss like i, I went back and went to draw more like i understood like i couldn't just be a talented person i have to be talented and hard working so since then i've been on this uh win streak that i've been on and especially like the last one being a finish so i, I dedicate that you know solely to Rupert Sport and like getting me in shape, getting me right and just giving me the skills to be able to go out there and produce these form performances. Yeah, that I mean that is really exciting. And also when you were talking, I glanced at Tapology and realized this is going to be your fourth pro fight of 2022. Because yeah. when, when you said that you've been at uh, your current gym for a year and a half, I thought well, it's probably going to be one, maybe two of your pro fights will be under them. And then when you said all four, I realized, wow, you've been at a at a really heavy clip, um, coming off of coming off of COVID, making your pro debut. It sounds like you, in a way, starting with a loss, having just been under there, allowed them to see what you need to work on, allowed yourself to see what you need to work on. What's it been like? You mentioned getting a finish in your last fight. How much confidence does that give you? What's it been like to kind of see your pro career build sort of just step after step yeah so definitely as far as like the confidence thing like it's confidence is like an all-time high you know like before I didn't I didn't know if I belong but now like I know I belong in there with anybody you know the best in the world and then as far as like you know um watching my pro career uh, grow like because I I just turned pro in October like October last year so when I fight Justin it'll make my one-year mark of being a professional so it's just been really like crazy just to see the growth on like five fights within my first year you know most guys they probably don't get that many fights in their first year so I'm happy and blessed and and just healthy to be able to keep fighting these fights keep winning and just keep going out there putting you know getting my hand raised yes indeed and with your with your age of being 26 
and going five pro fights in exactly a year, October to October, um, even though there was a change in, in the calendar year, you're absolutely right. Five pro fights in your first year. Is that something you mentioned being healthy? Is that something that your body's adjusted well to? Do you think you'll stay at this clip to see how you can get to maybe 10 pro fights? Because the UFC or higher level promotions typically start looking at people when they're eight and two, nine and one, seven and oh, stuff like that. So you got to kind of get another maybe five, four or five fights. Is that kind of on your mind to keep at this at this speed? Yeah, for sure. I always want to stay active, you know, regardless of what I'm doing. Like, it could be a fight. It could be a jiu-jitsu tournament. It could be a kickboxing match. I'm just looking to stay active, looking to get in there. As long as I'm healthy and I'm fresh, I'm, I'm looking to turn around really quickly and just keep the momentum rolling. Well, since you brought up jiu-jitsu, kickboxing, what's been your favorite experience outside of MMA? Because you had a pretty long amateur career, six fights, and now almost five pro fights in your first year. So that's 11 MMA fights, but outside of pure MMA, what's been your favorite experience or accomplishment in some other type of, uh, of martial arts? I think probably some of my most like famous accomplishments are like accolades. They really all come in like jiu-jitsu and wrestling. So I, I wrestled like pretty much like all my life from like middle school, up, you know, throughout high school and then did jiu-jitsu in high, uh, high school as well when I was doing wrestling. So like I won nationals, won state, um, won regionals. I think the only thing I haven't world I haven't won yet is world, you know. And I really like I really like that environment with the uh, jiu-jitsu community because everybody's like really open and friendly. Like, you know, even though I'm from Wisconsin, I go to like California, Florida, they always have like open arms, like, hey, you can come share in a gym or stay the night here, sleep on the mats, it doesn't matter. Like everybody in the jiu-jitsu community is really just like they like open. They like open their arms. Like, hey, you you can be our family. You know what I'm saying? Even though you stay like thirteen thousand miles away, you know. And um, they just always have fun with those people. Yeah, I, I've heard that quite a bit. The jujitsu community is, in some ways, quite a bit different than maybe the MMA community. Although the MMA community can be very giving. I just interviewed a guy earlier today that's doing a fundraiser for a lady who needs a liver transplant. So within the MMA community, there's a lot of love. But I do think that the jujitsu, and maybe it's because if nobody's ever been to a big tournament, um, it's not like it's not like there's one match going on. It's more of the wrestling mindset where there might be 20, 30 matches. And I think that leads people to being more friendly and more open as opposed to MMA, which kind of does a fantastic job. 247 puts on an incredible card where there's only one fight happening. There's only one thing happening at a time, kind of gets everybody's attention, just like boxing. You wouldn't have 10, 15 boxing fights unless you're in maybe a, uh, a Golden Globe or Golden Club uh, tournament. So super exciting that you really, really love uh, jujitsu. Do you have a belt rank as far as gi or have you been mainly no gi? I know there's a, there's a difference in gi and no gi and some no gi guys will go all the way through and never really get a belt rank. Yeah, so uh, I, I do train uh, regularly in the gi and uh, no gi. I started out with gi, then I always like been doing no gi as well, but I'm a purple belt, uh, third stripe in, uh, in jiu-jitsu. And so it's really cool that you have all those accolades and accomplishments. Is that something, if your pro career in MMA continues to uh, go in the right direction and you know, you're know you turning heads with your performances and all that, is that something that you'd like to pursue alongside MMA or, you know, as far as competing, or do you think you'd maybe take a break or, or do both at the same times? Because it can, it can kind of be, uh, it's up to the fighter, I guess, how they do that. Yeah. So as far as like trying to like maintain both at the same time, like this year alone has been kind of hard to like do jiu-jitsu tournaments and then fight, you know, cause I've been focused more so on fighting like beforehand, before I turned pro, I used to do like 10, I used to do like 10, 12 jiu-jitsu tournaments a year. And like, this year, I think I only done three, and that's, like, the lowest amount I've ever done in, like, my whole career since I've been competing. So, like, more so, I feel like it's better to maintain and focus on one of them. Maybe, let's say, like, when I retire or something, I can go back and focus on the other thing because Jitsu always would be there. MMA, I don't know how long it would be there. I don't know how much time I got in this game, so I just got to take advantage of the opportunities I have now. I mean, that mindset makes a lot of sense. CFFC out of New Jersey has launched Fury uh, Jiu-Jitsu, and they recently had uh, – Clay the Carpenter Guida, who's been retired for a few years. He's still competitive in jiu-jitsu. They do sort of featured jiu-jitsu where it's more of the MMA feel. The matchups are a bigger deal. It's single uh, BJJ. It's not the tournaments that you love. But it does show that there's 
longer life in jiu-jitsu, particularly uh, there's senior or master level jiu-jitsu tournaments. Every tournament I've ever been to, there's age brackets and then experience brackets. So you could be competing in your 40s and even 50s against people your, your age. So you're absolutely uh, straight on that as much as you miss the jiu-jitsu tournaments, your BJJ career has obviously benefited from you being as active as you are. So let's get down to your opponent. Uh, you're three and one, he's two and two. You're both known to be exciting. You're, you're both obviously young and fighting your fifth fight. He's two and two, you're three and one. I'd say five fights into a pro career, you're, you're kind of starting to build a pattern. You know, if you advance to four and one, that puts you in a, sort of a different path. Um, and obviously, if, if he drops under 500 or, or continues to break above 500, that would put him in a different path. So how important do you think you're coming in, you're from Indiana, th then you're completely on a more on the west side. Now you're coming to Pennsylvania, to Pittsburgh. How important do you think this is early in your career to really get um, – you know, get this win or how important do you think this fight is for you in your fifth pro fight? Yeah, especially like like you mentioned, both of us are on our fifth fight. He's two and two and three and one. I feel like now is the perfect time to make this like matchup. You got two up and coming young guys, you know what I'm saying, looking to go out there and build their careers. Like whoever wins this fight, I feel like that'll be the story tell for like the rest of their career. You know what I'm saying? Whether I go on to win and he goes on to win and vice versa, right? We both are looking to come out this fight super experienced and like a loss doesn't deter neither one of us, right? We always grow, we always come back, and we always come in, like, stronger until, like, the next uh, fight. And then as far as, like, how important it is, I feel like it's, like, every, I mean, every fight, not even just this fight alone, is, like, super important as far as, like, a win goes, right? Because a win gets you more money, gets you more attention, gets you a little bit more fame, right? So you slowly building on to, like, your legacy, per se, is, like, how you want to go. So every fight is important, not just this fight alone. Yeah, obviously, you know, if you try to take a fight off, you shouldn't be in the fight business, you know, because every fight matters. We've seen that at every level. Something you pointed out that, that I wanted to bring up when I was looking at it, checking your topology, all those things that I've known Justin for, because he was fighting at 247 when he was an amateur. But one thing that sometimes happens early in pro careers, and I think you guys are a good example of this. We, we don't know what's going to happen in the next 10 years. But sometimes there's matchups that you just have a feeling that at the next level that you might run into each other again, no matter who wins or who loses, both of you guys are headed um, on what would look like a really high level path. And we've seen we've seen this happen. Um, you want a champion, and I'm forgetting uh, the one that has the pistol on her hip. Um, who's the current champ in MMA in UFC. They had fought in Muay Thai three different times prior to the UFC and then have to keep fighting each other. It's like sometimes you kind of rise up together. And I could see you and Patton, you know, years down the road at a higher level in a different promotion, um, you know, kind of trying, the loser trying to get um, a rematch back and the winner trying to continue to progress. Do you see... Patton as sort of somebody that will likely sort of uh, rise with you, win or lose? Uh, for sure, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I feel like Justin Patton is one of those guys, like I say, he's a hardworking guy. He goes out there, he wins fights, you know what I'm saying? That's that's why he has two wins, you know what I'm saying? Like, he he hasn't gotten those wins because he was a pushover, because he fought easy guys. He got those wins because of his hard work ethic and, like, his ability to just go out there and finish fights. So, Definitely, you know what I'm saying? Anything is possible. Like, you know, we could fight now, and regardless of the outcome, we could fight 10, 20 years from now in the UFC, oh. Bellator, wherever. So, for sure. Yeah. Well, if you're fighting 20 years from now, it's going to be the <laughs> Ben Shamrock Gracie ridiculousness when they were almost 50 still fighting each other. But you're <laughs> right. You're right. Some of these some of these career matchups, I mean, I'd be willing to watch uh, certain throwback matchups, you know, even though the guys are well past their age, because that's what MMA is about. These legendary matches sometimes tend to happen, you know, over and over again, multiple times. Who, who can't, who can't forget just some of the greatest fights ever at 155, the Frankie, the answer, Edgar first grade Maynard, that was three fights and every single one was important and they could probably fight for a fourth time if they really wanted to. So um, I like the respect you showed Pat. And I know he has the same viewpoint with you because I've interviewed him on this podcast a couple of days ago. And it's really great to see people building their career, young, focused, dedicated for you. What 
what would you like to see come out of your trip to Pittsburgh, whether it be prediction or just an experience? And then where do you, where do you want to be sort of by the end of 2022? Uh, as far as like what I expect out of experience, cause I, I, I never been actually in Pate, uh, Pennsylvania, but I like traveled through like going to Virginia when I fought in Virginia and stuff. But like, as far as like the experience, I expect it to be a fun experience, like going to any other state or city or town, you know, and just to go out there and, you know, get my hand raised, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, he's expecting the same, but I'm going out there to get the victory, add on to my record, keep building my legacy. And then as far as, like, my goal by the end of the year, I just hope I'm in a spot to where I, like, I set myself up for something bigger in the future, whether it becomes at the end of the year or early 2023. So the sky is the limit. Well, knowing you, you might get two more fights in, in 2022 <laughs> without, without many fights you're taking. It's been an absolute honor and privilege. Before we sign off, who are your sponsors or your, your thank you list people that you want to give shout outs to? It's a big part of the MMA community. As you mentioned, you might be in there by yourself, but whether it's coaches, trainers, sponsors, they all have a part in you. Yeah, as far as the sponsors, I want to give a shout out to uh, Life of the Prize Fighter, CrowdFit, Barbatosa, and uh, Shri Bogdo. Those guys have always been like uh, setting me up for success, getting me all the things I needed, whatever it's like something simple as like, shorts you know what i'm saying something printed on my logo and then shout out to all my coaches and training partners you know what i'm saying even guys that don't necessarily like go to the gym there's been so many guys like hitting me up just to cross train and like be a part of my camp and those guys like have been a, such a um a instrumental into the success of what i've been able to accomplish so without those guys i'm going to be here today makes makes a lot of sense uh you sound like a great guy really focused it's incredible that you kind of got that opportunity to travel across the country, train at a well-known gym with sort of a different mindset, different approach. You've made the most of it, fighting five pro fights, will be fighting five pro fights in a year. Um, I can't wait to see what Braun the Berg 13, as of today, there's only two fights announced, your co-main event status and the main event, which is a, a, a fairly important, significant title fight. Um, and then there's still a whole card to get developed. So for people that are a fan of Reckless Rico, um, probably if you can make the drive, great. If not, I highly encourage you to get on 247fighting.com, do the pay-per-view, make sure you click Rico's name to give him the credit of why you're watching. But uh, we've been trying to promote and increase the pay-per-view side of things. Um, and it's also shout out to Jim Mooney and the matchmakers at 247 to kind of bring somebody like your caliber in. I, I think that's what makes 247 and the wins you mentioned. Patton has fought tough guys. You fought tough guys to really take the best fights that are possible as opposed to just trying to take fights that are maybe easier wins. And I think that's the matchmaking that 247 really strives for to bring somebody like you in, training out of a big gym with on a three fight win streak really shows that this fight matters to both of you. So thanks so much for coming on. You've been listening to MMA FanCast with Luke and Reckless Rico Tally. Thanks so much, buddy. Thank you. Have a good one. You too, bud.